Okay, um, welcome to Gru, and thank you so much for taking time out and coming on. Oh, I'm so happy to be here. Thank you for having me on. Definitely, yes. So the first thing I want to say is like, you are very busy. Like you have your hands in everything. You're an author, a gamer, an actress, a writer, a podcaster. Like how did, how do you find time to do all of this stuff? <laughs> I mean, I will say that a lot of the things that I was super busy with were before COVID when I got a little bit saner and said, I can't do this anymore. And before I became a mom, so I've definitely sort of pared my life down a little bit in a healthier way. And people are like, you look so happy. I was like, because I'm not stressed all the time. So yes, I love what I do, but I'm just doing it a, a little bit more curated now. And it's actually wonderful for me. So thank you for that. I, I do love everything I do and I can't not be a multi-hyphenate. So wherever you see me, it's just because I'm curious and I've never done it before. That's basically why I make things. Oh, wow. Okay. <laughs> And like for for a while, like you you were in, involved with 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 gaming, and you had your your own gaming place. And when did your love for gaming start? And how did it feel to be like the leading one of the leading women in the gaming world? Yeah, I started playing video games from my mom's lap when I was like six years old she was doing like infocom games that's how i recognize your guru from zork you know so um i love video games i was homeschooled so that was what my brother and i did all day you know we didn't do much else like honestly and when i moved to la and got kind of rejected a lot i started playing world of warcraft and that just turned into a show that i wrote called the guild and you know i do what i love i still i stream three times a week on twitch and it's not my job i mean it's not my profession but it's something I love. Gaming is part of who I am. And um, I, uh, my, my show, Third Eye, it's an Audible original. It's coming out um, very or it will be out. I think well, by the time this interview is out, it's, uh, it has several gaming references. Hopefully people will get because, you know, I can't quit it. But um, yeah, I, th I think that uh, especially Geek and Sundry is something I've been known for. I, I created that company and I did a lot of a show called Tabletop. I uh, I discovered a group called Critical Role, who's very popular in the D and D space now. So, um, you know, if I love something, I want to share my love of it with other people, and I'm a little too enthusiastic and dorky. Okay, so that's what I do, and I make stuff. And again, you know, when I have a story to tell, like this one in Third Eye, I will tell mm -hmm. it, um, and I won't take no for an answer. This project is actually eight years in the making, so um, it's it's wild how long I've had this idea and I wouldn't give up on it and I just made it happen and thank goodness for audible to let me do it exactly the way I wanted wow okay so yeah that that that's what I was going to ask next like I, I see like you know this is this is your podcast that you're going to be doing you wrote produce it and you do like voice voice acting too so um like what is third third eye like how to come up with the name and, and what will the podcast be about yeah it's really weird because the idea of a podcast like it, it it doesn't feel like what this actually is it's an audible original and it's essentially a tv show in audio so i wrote yeah. you know f a whole season of television and we recorded it and produced it and it took uh you know five years to get done and so this is a very big project and I love it so much. It's about a chosen one who fails and how she lives with herself. I play that chosen one. Her name is Laurel Jamila Pettigrew and she's the one who was supposed to beat the bad guy and she didn't. And how do you live with yourself? And then 15 years later, a kid comes into her life and kind of blows it up and she kind of has to deal with her past, her present and maybe her lethal future. So it's a lot of uh, laughs, but it's also an adventure and the cast is amazing. Neil Gaiman is in it, Sean Astin. I wrote a part for Will Wheaton because I collaborate with him a lot. London Hughes, Lily Pichu, Weird Al Yankovic does a cameo. So there's a cast of thousands and essentially most of them are just my friends I asked to be in this. Um, and I didn't think they would say yes. I mean, Neil Gaiman be playing the narrator, but he is so funny and snarky and uh, he steals every scene. So really you're there for Neil and then you'll enjoy the rest of it too. <laughs> Oh, wow. Okay. Like it actually sounds really good. Like you got a lot of good, 
good actors and singers and stuff in it. Yeah, no, they're amazing. And the chemistry between the cast is so awesome. We were able to sh uh, record a lot together because it was really important to me to have that back and forth, um, be able to improv a little. It's not a lot of improv, but just like the feeling of talking with another actor and sort of interjecting and just the energy of it. My friend Jonah Ray, who I worked with on a television show, um, people might be familiar with, uh, he on he directed me in there and I was like, oh, can you come and audio direct this? Because he has such a casual style and he's so much of an audiophile that I was like, I need this not to sound stilted, like a sort of a old timey radio play. That's not what we're going for here. We really want this to be real and visceral and funny. And I was like, you're the perfect person. And he was, he really, really made it so much fun to play with these amazing cast members. Wow, that that's awesome! I love it. <laughs> and when when's when's the show coming out? Like when 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 can fans listen listen watch it? It's out on October fifth, so probably ASAP. And you can get it at audible.com slash third eye. And you can you know a lot of people have Audible credits, so just I bet if you pop in there, you'll be able to just get it like that and listen to it immediately. And again, it's like the longest thing I've ever written. It's a novel length. You know, some people will probably think about it as an audio book. Uh, we mm -hmm. do it in chapters, but the way I wrote it, I wrote it like television show scripts. So, you know, wh whether you think about it as an audiobook or a, a performed audiobook or a television show in audio, what you're getting is a ton of content, amazing dramatic arcs, and uh, some really, really funny jokes. Like, there's one there that we just literally couldn't get through because it was so funny that Neil would say over and over again about Benny Hanna, and I hope people laugh as much as I did because I think it's the funniest thing ever written. <laughs> I wrote it. <laughs> <laughs> and and like you you act too like I, I saw like you won a a, a em, an Emmy for sing a long blog and the one and you co-starred with Doogie Hauser himself Neil Patrick Harris yeah uh, I'm not yeah I'm still on strike right now so I can't talk about some of my on camera uh, um, acting. Yeah. But as soon as that strike is over, I'm pretty excited to get back on there. You know, I took a pause from a lot of that because of COVID and being a, becoming a mom and stuff like that. So what I'm excited about is next year, you know, getting a, a role as cool as the ones I've played in the past, because I, as you know, there are a lot of shows I've been on and every one of them has been a dream role for me. So I'm, I, I'm putting into the universe that that dream role, you know, outside of Third Eye, which was my dream role as a TV show, yeah. I just I couldn't sell it. But, you know, I made it anyway, and that's like my biggest victory of all. Nice. So what kind of like pod podcast do you like listening to? Like, you know, um, I'm sure you were probably thinking, oh, how how am I going to make this this show into audio and podcasts? And did you like listen to any any podcast to see how how it works? I mean, absolutely. I did research um, and uh, they're not a lot of like contemporary, like there are some audible originals that have been done, but nothing was like exactly what I pictured in my mind. I listened to old time sort of old fashioned sort of radio performances as well. And I was like, I don't want to do that because that feels not fresh. Does it feel fun? Does it feel spontaneous? But sometimes the research you do about the things you don't want it to sound like is just as helpful as what you want it to sound like. And, you know, for me, a lot of the research was into chosen ones and like all the cliches of that. And like, there's a vampire character who's like completely the opposite of a cliche vampire and a fairy princess who's the opposite of a fairy princess. And so I kind of rebelled against a lot of the tropes of the things that I love, because um, I'll read, you know, whatever you give me a chosen one, I'll read it. But at the same time, when I write something, I need to be oppositional and do the opposite of what I know. So that was a really ex good experience. And so I try to subvert everything I do into something where you're thinking about it in a different way. You, you find it be familiar, but you find a different angle on it. And that's kind of a running theme in everything I do. Uh, nice, nice. And you say like with, with this show, like there's some gaming stuff too that that like gaming gaming fans are gonna like yeah, I think so. I mean, there's a couple of references. It certainly um, is something you could play while you're gaming. Uh, it would be an amazing accompaniment to you doing a session of uh, not Baldur's Gate because there's a lot of, you know, dialogue in that. But if you're playing Fortnite or something like uh, throw it on, you know, Valorant. 
if you do any of those uh building something i like yeah. to listen to stuff when i'm gaming because it really oh, helps yeah. me kind of yeah it's great i can multitask i mean i think gamers have to multitask that's our part of our brains right right exactly yeah <laughs> what kind of gaming stuff do you have now do you have a like a, any newer um games and systems and well, I have, you know, I have a, uh, I generally piece a uh, game on my PC because I stream, I stream three times a week and I've been streaming Fay Farm lately, Baldur's Gate 3, um, Starfield. I love RPGs and I love farming games. So those are kind of the, and I love little indie games that you could complete in one day. Those are really super fun for me too. Um, I mean, I have a PS5 right here that I was playing God of War until my dog ate all my wires. I still haven't replaced one of them. I'm so lazy. Um, so yeah, I have, and I play every night I play on my, um, switch with my daughter. She's six years old and she like okay. eats, eats fruit and tells me how to play Pokemon. So <laughs> I love gaming. It's just part of my world and part of, uh, who I am in a very organic way. And, you know, I'll never not game. It's just, it's, oh, I yeah. love it. No, nah, it's, it's, it's fun. It's a lot of fun. I love it too. <laughs> yeah. And do you do you like doing the cons too like all of the the, the comic cons and cosplaying and... i don't cosplay because quite frankly i'm just lazy but i do love going to cons i do it as part of my job but also i do it for fun you know when i go to a con i can't wait to see what i can buy and bring home i Honestly, love like... seeing all the other guests i love meeting fans like honestly my career is one of fan support, you know? I mean, the guild, we put a PayPal button up on our website before Kickstarter even started, you know? Oh, and wow. for me, the independence of being able to be supported by fans directly has kept me going because Hollywood does not like what I do. They don't think it's that important. They have never really embraced my vision of what everything is and that's okay. Like I get to be an actor and a host and everything, but the stories I wanna tell, the shows I wanna make, they're just too niche for a bigger audience, they think. Yeah. So for, but I get to tell them the way I want to tell them. I get to tell them and, and I'm so blessed to have fans who want to see more of what I make. And so that keeps me going and it makes me excited to come home and make stuff when I go to a con, when somebody tells me that a character I played like changed their life or uh, a show that I produced and came up with uh, changed the way their family interacts because they can play games at night and stuff like that. It's really amazing. And so it makes you feel like, hey, I'm not a brain surgeon. I'm not saving lives, but sometimes you are with what you make, you know? True, true. And I'm a huge horror fan and I love asking my guests this when they're on. Are there any, since it's Halloween season, are there any horror films that you like to watch during Halloween season? I've never seen a horror film other really? than The Exorcist. Yeah. I've seen The Exorcist and Poltergeist, probably. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. Yeah, those are, those are horror films. I am so scared. It'll be like a week if I accidentally see something. I accidentally saw some like Jason when I was like six years old and I was so traumatized that I've never, I just don't like being scared. I don't like being yeah. hunted in video games and I don't like being scared. It's not enjoyable oh. to me. Now, every October I do play some scary game on my Twitch channel just because people oh, okay. love to see me panic and scream. So I'll play something this month once and that is it, okay? Because I am a screamer. I don't have the constitution to be scared and I need my beauty sleep. So no, no, no. Exactly. But thank you very much. Sorry to disappoint you. It's just not happening. <laughs> do, do you dress up for Halloween? Like do you and your, your da daughter dress up for Halloween and stuff? She likes me to dress themed with her. She's going as Joan of Arc this year, and I'm going to be going as the Archangel Michael. So oh, nice. I didn't pick it. I didn't pick it. She picked it. I don't know where she found out about Joan of Arc, but it's happening. So <laughs> who, knows? Any... who knows? <laughs> and what about songs? Like, what kind of songs do you like listening to? What's on your playlist? Boy, I actually have a whole playlist for Third Eye I made up. And hopefully really? if you follow me on socials, it's at mm -hmm. Felicia Day everywhere, except TikTok, which it's Felicia Date for some reason. Um, you, I will be sharing that playlist. I mean, I love like, I know this is very specific, but I love uh, girl Nordic pop rock. You know, okay. like I love, uh, I love for some reason, happy Nordic people singing, you know, ABBA is like the progenitor. But like, there's lots of like modern bands, um, 
Well, yeah, I, uh, I'm trying to remember any of them right now, but it, you put me on the spot because I wasn't prepared for music questions. <laughs> <laughs> and if you were going to do a karaoke song, what do you think you would sing? Oh, I would be Journey Open Arms or oh Mr. Mister. The Mr. Mister, uh, the one about the flying. What is that one? Uh, you know that one I'm talking about. I'm blanking on the name now. Yeah. Um, wow. <laughs> I, I like uh, the Fievel song because I always like doing a good duet somewhere. Okay. Out, you know, somewhere out there. Love that one. Nice. They're classics. I, got, I like a classic. And I'll do like a pink song. You know, oh, Gwen yeah, Stefani. Nice. Yeah, if I've had a, if I've had a drink or two of me, I can do that. <laughs> Right, exactly. <laughs> that's that's the only time I I get up to do do karaoke. Yeah, too, no way. Have a couple of drinks. No, I don't like it when somebody gets up there and is like, "Let me show you how good I am." I'm like, "Get off the stage! <laughs> You're not here to be good. You're here to have fun and be drunk." Okay. Exactly. <laughs> I never like to go on after someone that sings amazing and and I'm, and then they call my name next and I no, you know, like it's awful. Under the table or something. Ruin they ruin everybody's <laughs> night. Those people ruin everyone's night. Get off the stage. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Is there any place you would love to travel to that you haven't seen yet? Um, I love traveling. I love it so much. I'm going to London for MCM Comic Con in a couple of weeks, and it's an excuse to go to Copenhagen, which I've never been to. Um, but I have never been to Tokyo or Japan at all, and that's my bucket list place. I want to take my daughter when she, I'm going to wait until she's, you know, like maybe nine because it's very expensive. But then I want to go see the, you know, Nintendo World. You know, I want to see all that, but I also want to just see everywhere. I just, I'm, I've been obsessed for a long time. And for some reason, nobody has ever flown me there for work. So I'm like, I'm like just into going and that's going to be a vacation splurge that I do because, you know, and I'll take my daughter. She's cool. And last question is where can fans follow you at? They can follow me everywhere at Felicia Day. So I'm everywhere except TikTok, which I'm Felicia at day, uh, dot day, Felicia dot day. I also have a wonderful Discord, discord.gg slash Felicia Day. We have a great community of people discussing all sorts of nerdy stuff in all sorts of categories. And I lurk there. I have a Felicia Adventures channel. If you want to ask me a question, come on over. And I am on Twitch at Felicia Day three times a week. You, If you want to watch me play a game, that's really fun. And yeah, yeah. So follow me. I do a lot of stuff. I do have a couple of podcasts that are erratic, but I do them. So if you just follow me on socials, you'll see me talking about all of the stuff that I make, including the big stuff like Third Eye, which, you know, please pre-order it. Third Eye, dot, uh, I mean, it's audible.com slash Third Eye. Oh, okay. I, I will definitely do that. Well, great. Thank, thank you so, you much, so much for, much for this interview. It was so great. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Thank I appreciate you. it. I love that background. Definitely. I love it. Love it, love it. <laughs> thank you so much. All right.